This week on The Wire, prices surge as listings fall, buying intentions at an all-time high, and investor market share rising. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate. We can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment, and more. Our top story for this week, prices surge as listings fall. So national residential property listings dropped 4% in June, with old stock being cleared nationwide as the number of buyers outstrips sellers, pushing up property prices around the nation. Now, figures released this week by SQM Research indicate that the largest monthly falls in property listings were in Canberra, Hobart, Melbourne, and Adelaide. Now, property listings are trending downwards nationwide, which is putting upward pressure on prices as demand outstrips supply. Now, compared to 12 months ago, national listings fell 21.6%, with the biggest falls in Hobart, Adelaide, Canberra, and Brisbane. SQM Managing Director Louis Christopher says, notwithstanding the quieter winter season, property listings fell again in June following a drop in May. Now, we've also seen another large fall in old listings this month, indicating old stock is being sold and new property listings aren't offsetting this fall. Now, this highlights there are more buyers than sellers in national property markets. That's all from Louis Christopher. Now, guys, for our next story, buying intentions at an all-time high. So Australia's appetite for property has hit an all-time high. One in six Aussies intend to buy a new home in the next 12 months. Now, according to a NAB survey, 15% of respondents have confirmed their home buying intentions, compared with 13% in the previous quarterly survey. Now, according to NAB's research, young Aussies are leading the increase in demand. 39% in the 18 to 29 group are saving to buy, while 26% are renting but saving to buy. Uh, NAB executive for home ownership Andy Kerr says young Australians are the most aspirational home buyers right now, and we're seeing this with 25% of applications now done via video, with thousands more booked online every month. But while the intent to buy is higher, optimism is still subdued, with only 40% of Australians confident that now is a good time to buy a home, and 31% confident now is a good time to buy an investment. Lower than last quarter's 45% and 34% respectively. Now guys, moving on to our final story of the week, investor share, uh, sorry, I should say investor market share rising. So ABS figures show investor finance rose 13% in May, or more than 115% higher than the same time last year. Loan commitments for investor housing are at their highest level since June 2015, after falling to a 20 year low in May 2020. Housing credit growth is about 7%, or about the same level when the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority started to tighten lending standards in 2014. Now, Ken Starr's stick, uh, Steve Mickenbecker says, it's possible APRA might look to slow investor speculation to ease the path for first home buyers. Now, total lending for the month was a record a $32 billion, up 95% over the same time last year, with owner-occupied loans rising by a record $23 billion, which was 88% higher than last year. Now, CBA recently tightened buffer rates, which means it will adopt a stricter assessment of the capacity of some borrowers to repay their home loans at higher interest rates. But other lenders, such as Westpac, are set to ease lending conditions for self-employed borrowers. Well, guys, they are the top stories happening this week. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Have a great week, and remember, guys, there is only one thing in life that makes a difference, and that's action. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.